Hello and welcome to another episode of Quick Tips for Students. In this video, we're going to talk about App V and how to use Microsoft Virtual Application Sequencer to create an App V for Windows clients. App V for Windows client is actually a technology that Windows use to deliver Windows 32-bit applications to users as a virtual application. So what of the one of the benefits of using App V is you can run multiple versions of applications of the same application on the same operating system without any conflicts. The cleanup after the uninstall is way easier and you don't need to worry about the minimum requirements for an application. As long as your hardware, your client has the minimum hardware to run that application, you can just install an app V and run it. Technically, the installation is not a traditional Windows 32-bit installation. It is acting similar, not the same, similar to portable applications that we used to have. How do we create an app V? First of all, we will need the Windows Deployment and Assessment Toolkit. Um, it's a series of applications and tools, which I will have more videos around each one of those tools in the close future. In order to run ADK, you have to download and install it first. I have already put the down, uh, download link in the description. If you haven't installed it before, uh, please download and install it. I will create a video on how to install Windows ADK on another video. Right now, I've already downloaded it. Let's get started with installing ADK. We start by running the ADK setup. I'm going to install it on my own computer. If you want, you can just download it from Microsoft website and run it on another computer. Using next, I am not going to share this uh, insights with Microsoft. It's a lab environment. There's no need for that. So I'm going to click next, accepting the license agreement and selecting which tools from the toolkit we would like to install. I'm going to leave it for the default by default for now, but what we will be using is the Microsoft application virtualization app V sequencer. Let's hit install. Perfect. Windows Assessment and Deployment Toolkit has been successfully installed. What we need to do, we need to run the application sequencer and start building our first package. Microsoft Windows Application Sequencer, or you can go to the All Applications and search for Application Virtualization Sequencer. Run. Once you open the application sequencer, you have two options. Option number one, create your new virtual application package or edit and modify an existing one. We haven't created anything yet, so we're going to create a new virtual application package. Yes, we're gonna select the default, create a new package. As you see, there are quite a few steps which we're going to go through every single one of these steps. On the very first step, the application virtualization wizard tests your computer and see if there is any pending actions. 
you might see an error message here saying, hey, you have an open item or there's a search going on or there is a previous application that hasn't been completely closed. Uh, depending on the issue that you might see, you have to address them and then click refresh. Right now, the computer is ready. It's been prepared for the installation so we can continue to the next step. First thing that is asking us is the type of the application that we're going to create. Are we going to create a standard Win32 application? Is it a sort of add-on or a plugin? Like, are we creating a plugin for Excel or something for Microsoft Edge as an example? Or are we creating a middleware application? In our example, we are going to create an app v for a traditional Windows 32-bit application called Notepad++. I will paste the link in the description on where to download it and test that. So for that reason, we're going to select standard application. Going next. Now, we have two types of installer modes. We can say, you know what? I'm going to allow the sequencer itself to modify the entire application process. Or you can do a custom installation. If you have multiple applications, it's always better to go with a custom installation. In our case, we only have one. So I'm going to select the application source. If you read the description, it is asking you to browse the source of the application that you're going to create. So as I told you, I have already downloaded the application, placed it in my computer. It's the Notepad++ version 8.4.5. And that's the application we're going to convert to an app, app V. Click open and select next. On the next page, you are prompted to give your virtual applications a name because I want it to be visible so we know that it's a new application. I'm going to call it VNPP845. So we know that it's the virtual notepad plus plus 845 is the version. Click next. Now, what will happen, you continue the complete process of the installation and App Sequencer is monitoring all the changes. So let's continue with the installation. Clicking OK. Next. I agree with the license agreement. Next. The default setting for Notepad++ is fine for me. Next. And install. Oh, we can even run it to test. And it works. Now that this install has been finished, you can say, I'm finished with the installation. I'm finished with the installation. Click next. The sequencer has detected that the Notepad++ have been installed in this address. You need to test it by selecting it and run selected. What it does, it will try to run the application to make sure that all the requirements are there. Click next. And it's going to give you a full review report once it's done. There are no issues find, found, so we can click next to continue. Are there any further customization that you need to do? Or would you like to create a package? Um, in our case, we don't have more customization, so we can say stop now and create our basic package. Would you like to save the package or would you like to modify it? We're done. We can give it a description or we can continue with build. It is prompting us that it's going to save it in my profile desktop and the app V name. I'm okay with this address. It's a lab environment. So let's create. We're, the package has been completed. We have the beautiful green check mark, which means the completion has been successful. But we see a warning here that says some files have been excluded. Verify that the package works properly. Okay, sure, we, we're gonna verify that. Click close and we are done with our application sequencer. Let's take a look at our virtual Notepad++ application. As we see, we have the virtual Notepad++ as a Windows installer and we have it as an app v file. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer this folder to another computer that does not have Notepad++ installed. I'm going to copy it on my host. And then from here, I'm going to copy it into another client, which we have here. As you see, it's a completely different client and it does not have Microsoft Notepad++ installed. We can do a quick check. If we go to all applications, there's nothing as Notepad++ installed on this computer. App V runs based on a service, which is called application virtualization. If I start to run this application right now, you will see that there would be an error message and it will not work because we have not enabled the App V services. How do we enable the App V services? Through PowerShell. I would like you to see the error message and then we go by enabling the App V service. How do we enable it? Let's open up our PowerShell. Windows Terminal is the new home for Microsoft PowerShell, or if you need to open a command prompt at the same time in the same window. If you don't know the commands for App V, you can quickly find them. We know that the command is enable dash app V, but if you didn't know in PowerShell, you can easily find the commands get dash command. And we know that the PowerShell has the autocomplete. So if you type half the command and hit tab, it will show you the rest. Get dash command. Uh, I know there is something with app V, so I'm gonna go ahead and search by, show me any commands that have star app V in them. So any commands that start with something and then has the word app V in it. Let's search and it tells me, shows me that there are two commandlets, enable app V, and disable app v what we need right now is enable app v so and that's what we're going to type enable app v hit enter access denied the reason that you're seeing the access denied is that i just opened the powershell normally in order to change a service or disable a service you will always need to run your powershell commands as an administrator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the PowerShell as an administrator. So Windows can bypass the UAC. So I'm gonna run the same command, enable app v, and see the results. App v was successfully enabled. That's all you need on the client side. Now let's go ahead and try our virtual Notepad++ one more time. Let's run it. Wait a few seconds for Windows to do its thing. And now let's go into Microsoft Start. As we see, Notepad++ has been added to our Start menu. We know that this application does not exist here and we did not install Notepad++. But our client computer now can successfully run Notepad++ as a virtual app V. I hope you found this video useful. There are more contents coming every week. Please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified for the future upcoming content. See you all on next video.